All right, well, this is my third day in a row I'm trying to get this video in. Maybe this one will work. <laughs> the first day I recorded it, I thought it was pretty good. But uh, that new microphone I got is giving me problems. So I'm going to need to do a little bit more research on that. And see what exactly was wrong with it. Because all you could hear was buzz. So that couldn't work. But I'm going to try it again today. And uh, I mentioned in a Facebook post on my page. If you're not liking my page, you should go do that. But uh, I have been going through these videos, the list I made. And it was a long list, so I cut it down. But all this we've been going through. Uh, the sins that'll keep you out of heaven and like I said in my other videos what keeps you out of heaven is not accepting salvation not accepting Jesus Christ not repenting of these sins and putting your faith in Jesus and being forgiven for them that's what keep but these are the sins that people will choose over that and uh you know, I got these, I got the list from Galatians 5, 19 through 21, and 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. That's where I came up with these lists, these sins at. And I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, so you can get a feel where I got this one from. Uh, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Some of them you recognize because I already did a video on them. But through process of elimination, I've gotten to some rather controversial uh, topics to close out with for these last two videos. This one being six, and the next one being seven, which is going to be the last one. But today we're going to do effeminate. Effeminate. Yep, I know what you're thinking too. But, uh, I looked up the word, like I do for all these, if, if you've watched previously. And there's always several definitions. So I just go with the one I like the best. They're all, you know, they're all the same definition. I just worded differently. And I used ap1611.com, I think it was, their dictionary. Since I used King James, I figured I used King James Dictionary. But the one I picked was unmanlike softness. Or a man with woman-like qualities. And I bet you don't have to step out of your house very long for you see somebody like that but uh the bible and not even just the bible but science too makes it clear there is a distinct difference between men and women and we're going to go to first peter 3 7 where it says Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Let me repeat that. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may be not hindered. So Peter refers to the woman as a weaker vessel. So when the, before you start throwing rocks at me, uh, it's just fact that men were made to be physically stronger than women that doesn't mean that women aren't equal stuff like that in the sight of god we're all equal spiritually you know what i'm saying but men are supposed to be stronger than women and we're going to cover this some more when we, go, when we keep going first timothy 2 12 And I covered this verse in my complementarianism video. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor do you serve authority over the man, but to be in silence. 
So obviously, even though in this day and age everybody's like, oh, women can do the same things as men. Obviously God didn't intend for women to do the same thing as men. Because he's made it pretty clear in the Bible that women aren't to preach. That's the man's job. And I know a lot of people disagree with that, but hey, that's what the Bible says. In Genesis 2.18... It says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So consider this. If God had made Adam another Adam, how would that have been help? How would that have been helpful to him? Because the copy would have been able to do all the same things Adam could do. So that really wouldn't have helped him out much, would it? But instead, God chose to create woman. So that she could do all the things that Adam couldn't do. See how this works out? All good and great. Because God knows what he's doing. So God expects, you know, there's a difference between men and women, as we just covered. And God expects men to act like men. We go to first or well for we'll go to first Kings chapter two, since we're closest to that. If we follow along anyway. 1 Kings 2, 1 and 2. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Strong. Be thou strong. Show thyself a man. Then we go to 1 Corinthians. I want you to remember what you just heard in that now. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. So God, if you didn't notice the key word there, strong. God expects men to be strong. And that's not just talking about physical strength. Because, uh, you know, look at me, do I look physically strong to you? I'm skinny as real. Not gonna be winning any weightlifting competitions anytime soon. But strong can refer to be emotionally strong, mentally strong, stuff like that. Be strong like a man. You know what I'm talking about. God also expects now here's where we're getting gray here. Man also expects men to act like or to dress like men, look like men. And you know styles come and go and whatnot. And the stuff that is in style that men wear for the most part nowadays didn't really exist back then and vice versa. But God expects there you to be able to look at a man and go, oh, that's a man right there. Job 38.3 Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand thee an answer. I will demand of thee an answer thou me. Gird up thy loins like a man. If you don't know what that means, that was when they back in them times they wore those robes and whatnot. And whenever they were gonna do something physical, like fight or do some work, they gird up their loins and draw their robe up between their legs and tie it up, kinda of make it like a pair of shorts so they didn't expose themselves while they were doing physical activity gird up your loins like a man and deuteronomy 22 5 i think really puts this thing in the perspective Twenty two five. the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, in this day and age, we got some men who, first of all, don't act like men. And they certainly don't dress like them. And this can be a term that people come up with as beta males. That's like the slang term for it. Just sissy men, you know. I'm not even going to pull no punches. Let me just tell you straight up. 
sissy looking men, sissy acting men, transgenders, tell them about, well, I'm not really a man, I'm just a woman trapped in a man's body. Genesis 5, 1 and 2, and this is a verse that I'm going to repeat because Jesus quoted it, but I want to you know, show you the original one. I'll just read two. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Male and female, they were created. Now, Mark 10, 6, Jesus quotes this, and you know it already, but I'm going to read it anyway. Mark 10, 6, Jesus talking here. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. God made them male and female. He didn't make them male, but they might be a female. He didn't make them female, oh, but, you know, they might feel like a man. He, did, he didn't do that. If he made you a man, that is what he intends for you to be. He didn't mess up. He didn't make a mistake. He knows what he's doing. So for someone to tell me some garbage about I was, I'm was i a woman trapped in a man's body, that is, there's something going on up here that ain't right. You say, well, that's mean. Well, listen, check this out. What if I came in and people are like, hey, Richard, what's up? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not Richard no more. What? Well, actually, I uh, identify as a pickup truck. Yeah. Um, I know I look like a man. And uh, so I was I was living a lie because I'm actually a pickup truck just trapped in a man's body. And people are going to look at me like, what? And they're probably going to put me in a room that has rubber walls and give me some special pills. And let me talk to a counselor every day. That's <laughs> probably what they're going to do. But how come whenever someone comes up that's a man, scientifically a man, you know, you can look like a woman but you still be a man, you know. Someone comes up and says, well, I'm not a man. I know I was born that way, but I feel like I'm a woman. I just feel like I should be a woman. And how come nobody, you know, nowadays we've got to the point where, like, oh, well, Everybody's like, well, they, they want to be a woman. That's what we'll call them. Like, they have an illness. They have a mental illness. And we don't, we don't try to get them help for it. You know? They're pretending to be something they're not when they're a man. Biologically, can't change that. You can change the outside. Make yourself look like a woman, but inside you're still a man. And that is in exactly what God intended for you to be. He didn't mess up. He intended for you to be a man. And trying to tell people that you're not one doesn't change the fact that you are one. So that must mean that there's something going on up here where there's some screws that ain't tightened all the way down. But we don't try to give them help. You know, nobody wants to do that. They want to say, oh, well, if they want to be a woman, let them be a woman. And it's... You know, really mean, to be honest with you. It's mean to them to let them go around thinking that. But if you were born a man, you are born a woman, it's because God warned you that way. I'm not going to tell God, God, you know, you made them a man, but they feel like a woman, so you must have messed up. He didn't mess up. You don't get to choose your gender. God chose it for you already. God didn't mess up. If he made you a man, that is exactly what he intended for you to be. And he expects you to act like one and he expects you to look like one. Now, you could argue about the way people dress and whatnot, but that's a whole different video that I ain't got time for. But, uh, be a man. Don't be a girly man. Like, what was that? Was that Saturday Night Live skit they used to do? Girly man. Don't be a girly man. 
Besides, even though they don't always come out and say it, a woman would much rather be with a man that acts and looks like a man than some little sissy dude, you know? But effeminate, that was the topic today. I hope I hope that covered it somewhat. I hope I didn't chase too many rabbits or anything. But the effeminate. God created you to be a man. He wants you to be a man. So, wait do you see the next video. If you thought this one was controversial. <laughs> Till next time, take it across. Carry on.